everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa. And today I'm very excited to show you how you can dip your toe into painting a beach scene where the sand is wet and there's a lot of really interesting diffused reflections along a cliff face. You've got sea foam, gentle rolling in waves, wet sand, dry sand, eroded cliffs, and a really stunning sky with like a burst of lights. There's a lot we're going to cover in technique an opportunity for you as an artist. I'm going to explain everything I do step by step. I'm going to show you the techniques, explain the color mixes, tell you the tools that I'm using. If you check the description below, you'll see a link to the website, which will take you to the video page. And there you'll find extra resources like a traceable if you don't enjoy drawing and you don't want to sketch it in. You'll also find a grid if you'd like to have that help you do the process of sketching it in and a written out step by step mini book that has every one of these chapters and steps written out and explained on the mic is my husband john hello he helps me with these amazingly weird videos <laughs> by making sure that the camera is pointed at what we're doing and he has questions that you might have at home he really tries to make sure that everything is very engaging and you can really see what's happening because if i explain a technique you can see the technique and you have the resources to understand the technique chances are that you can duplicate that technique which is the whole point of this tutorial. This tutorial is part of a 30 day painting program where I teach people how to paint uh, water in landscape better. It's called Acrylic April and there's 30 paintings. So you can come in and just do this one tutorial if this was the image you were interested in doing. But if you've ever been curious about how you would paint water and landscape better, you could go ahead and participate in that. Guess what? This has the best foam. <laughs> it has the best foam, but it's also free. It's all free. So if that's something that you want to do, it's completely free. So for whichever reason that you're here, you're welcome both ways. I'm so happy to have you and so happy to be showing you how you can paint this. I don't think, you know, there's stuff in the description down below. Mm -hmm. Materials, more information, free stuff for you. If you know that, there's nothing to do but get your paint, get your brushes. Come back and meet me at Easel right now. I'm going to show you how you can paint this. For today's lesson, we're going to be using an 8x8 stretch canvas. I've got a T-square and a watercolor pencil to do some initial sketching to lay out lines. If you don't have a watercolor pencil, you could use chalk. I don't recommend using a graphite pencil because it can breathe up through the paint. I have the acrylic colors Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, this is Titanic Yellow, also sometimes called Naple. I just grabbed the wrong two. <laughs> this is the exact one that I'm using is the Titanic Yellow, but there is a whole blog, if you check the description below, that will take you and explain the color, tell you all the companies that sell it, and it ranges from like $3 to what the golden is. Um, so there's a big range, and it gives you the exact brands and the exact names, so you don't have to figure that all out if you don't already have a tube, or you could just use like a Cad Yellow if you wanted to. Thalo green and titanium white. We are going to get right into it today. All right. I feel like getting into it today. I'm ready. Okay, so let's go to step one. So in step one, what we're going to do is we're going to lay out some major landscape shapes. That way we're not painting very different colors in very different zones. I'm going to use my T-square to allow me to have straight lines. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the top. I'm going to measure down to just right around the four and a half inch mark. I'm going to make a very light line across my surface. And that is going to be a horizon line. I'm going to come down from my four and a half inch mark and really right just below my six inch mark. I'm going to make a little kind of moment there that I just, I need to know where that is. So I'm just putting it off the edge. And remember this will, this will evaporate when I add water to it because watercolor pencil will disappear in. At the four inch dividing point, the halfway point of the canvas vertically, I'm gonna add another mark. Now this is gonna give me the guidance I need to freehand in the other elements that I wanna do. So the first other element that I'm gonna talk about is the seascape which is going to come forward and scoot back and really is dancing forward from up here. It's a pretty deep and sudden escape from the surface. This is very far away up here. 
and we will have a kind of a little angled wave kind of coming here and going back so we'll have some nice little foam of something that's coming in and we will be making little inlets mm. let's put another little inlet there we can make that out and it'll just look like a wave that's sort of rolling in now here we have an interesting and famous cliff face this is actually a pretty known cliff face so I don't know where it is, but I see it a lot of play. I see it in a lot of artwork, and I see it in a lot of photographs on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So I assume it is iconic and known, though I don't know <laughs> what it is. Hey, internet can tell me. That's true. In internet, what cliff face is this? So I look forward to learning that. I'm going to make a little sketch, though, of said famous cliff face. I'm going to come to the halfway point visually. This is a guesstimate. Because we're not like measuring if this is a hill or a mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that? The Welshman that went up the hill and came down the mountain? That movie? Really old yeah. movie? Uh, you know. I really like that movie. I don't, I haven't rewatched it in a while because I don't know if it'll hold up. I'm going to sketch down. And I'm just trying to get the architectural. Out. You ever notice that? Like movies don't always hold up? Oh, yeah. No. Smokey and the Bandit totally doesn't hold Does up. Does not hold up. Does not. It's, and I love, every, like, I love. Just, I, actually, I, mean, I don't know. It doesn't hold up. It was very nope. uncomfortable to watch. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, things that are problematic. So I'm going to continue to come down here, and we're going to make another little bumpy area. I may even, I maybe need to shorten this a bit even some. So that's like the little sketching that I'm doing is just trying to make sure that I've got these spaces that will let me do this. Now there's these sort of like little erosions that happen here and I like to mark out that little triangle so I remember that it's going to be there. And then there's a weird little area right here that will be coming down. And then you've got to realize that there's ridges, right? These little erosions. I'm not going to really too much worry today about painting every little erosion. But this is what we've got to really sort of know that's going in here. And then the other thing that we've got to know is coming, oh gosh, just about a inch half inch down from here is a dry sand run really comes out to here and then another dark sand run it's so strange but it's really about the way the waves come in hit things erode them mm -hmm. that's why this cliff face looks like it does because the shore will be hitting it on occasion and then rain is coming down and those two things make this type of cliff face so once we get that iconic look in <laughs> i don't know why i put that in air quotes it, it probably is Probably people are going to be like, this is the most important beach that ever was, and it's crazy that you don't know what it is, and I'm going to feel really bad later. But right now I don't know, so I'm going to go with that. All right. Okay, that is step one. Let's go on to step two. So this is a very moody coastline. It's a, one we really haven't done on my YouTube channel before. Well, our YouTube channel. It's one we haven't done on our YouTube channel before. And I really wanted to cover this technique. I'm going to show you some different things that I've showed you in previous lessons. And that's really saying something considering how many lessons are on the channel. But the first thing that I've got to do is take a bright brush. This is a number 26 bright. I'm going to get it a little bit damp and kind of brush away this wonderful wish. Oh, it, you know, and my wish was that you're striving and thriving in your creativity. Did I say that at the beginning or did I forget this time? Um, I don't know. If I forgot, you should know that my wish for you is that you're striving and thriving in your creativity. That's a good right. wish though. That's a good wish. <laughs> so I'm going to do a very light base down here and it's going to kind of come up a little bit in a fan and an angle and then we're going to blend up into a very soft blue. I've got my Thalo blue and my ultramarine blue um, because they make a very nice middle blue that I can come up into. I begin, however, with some white. And this is so that I can do a keyhole of paint mm -hmm. of a, a yellow and kind of a peach that's going on. And if I begin with the white, begin with white, that's going to keep it light enough for me to actually do that. And that way I can get into the blue. I'm wiping off on a towel off camera because I've got some towels put to the side. I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll take this and wipe it off. I don't want it to have so much water, and I'm going to just blend that right here. It's leaving it pretty light, isn't it? Beautiful little sky. It's going to be really pretty. 
I'm kind of coming at a fan angle as you do. Mm -hmm. And this will be really neat when I put the clouds in that I'm going to have. Now I just took a towel and wiped off my brush so that I could come back and kind of brush it this way. It doesn't need to be a perfect pristine white. I just want to have a good fanning. Dakota fanning, that is. Is that going to be your brush? <laughs> the Dakota fan? <laughs> I would get sued. You know you would. <laughs> okay. Parody! Parody! <laughs> no, man, it doesn't always protect you that way. Like, I know. You know does, does it stop the lawsuit? It doesn't may be, stop the lawsuit. You may be victorious, but it doesn't stop the, the lawsuit. lawsuit. <laughs> so I'm going to take... <laughs> we need a shirt. But it doesn't stop the lawsuit. <laughs> So I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue and phthalo blue because in the middle of each other, they make a very neutral blue that isn't quite as washed out as sometimes ultramarine will be. And it lets us really get some personality going in the sky. We do want personality going in the sky, but we want it to be light. So I may need to add more white. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm just coming up above the, I'm really liking this already. I like it. It's fun, right? Mm hmm Brushing that out, making sure it's really covering the canvas. I want it to cover the canvas. Now I'm going to make sure the fan looks good. Make sure, look how little paint is on my brush. It's not really heavy loaded. If this were heavy, heavy loaded, is this would be so hard to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a little white into my brush and kind of while everything's wet, make sure I'm fanning a little, a little white. A little? Yeah. See, it lightens it, but it also kind of makes it seem like there's light rays. Which is a really cool look. Being careful here, just because I don't want to mess up the rays. Oh, my goodness, that is exciting. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a big thing if you've never done this before. So we'll call that a step and come back and uh, we're going to dry it, mm -hmm. come back and put in sort of the flare. Further into the sky, shall we go? I'm going to grab a number six round. This is a hog bristle brush. These brushes are chunking hog, interlocked. Those are the terms that you're looking for. The actual brush size is a size six, and this brand is a Cambridge, but these are not always available everywhere, so you'll have to look and see. But what you really worry about is a number six chunking hog interlock. Look for something about the size of my pinky, mm -hmm. is what you're looking for. I'm going to take some wet and some yellow together just a little bit i'm gonna come along here and make a little smidge of a glow in the horizon line as you do as you do as we all do now i'm just kind of brushing that out already that's super fun right mm -hmm. You can take a little of this over to your Quinn, and it makes this extraordinary peach and a sunny peach. Very sunny. Very sunny peach. We're going to brush a little of this glow. Sometimes I'll get a, just enough water in my brush to improve its glow out. Here I widen and drag out the brush, and I'm just kind of trying to make little radial color spikes. That's looking really good. Now I can come back in to a little of my white and blue. I can make sure that I've got a little white and blue coming back in.
I want this to be super light. Mm -hmm. It's really nice how it kind of layers there. And I guess it has to be dry in order to do that, huh? Yeah, it really does. For this to happen, it has to be somewhat dry. And I'm putting out another little light layer of sky just to make sure that it has that dawn feeling. And I'm just brushing it out. It's okay that a bunch of sky underneath is showing. Mm -hmm. We're just brushing that out. When I have all that there, kind of doing its little fan thing, I can actually start to put in some very interesting clouds. I can take a little of my pink, white, and yellow in my brush and push out. And I really kind of, I'm going to turn my brush, and that's so that some of the glow of my clouds is more thoughtful and fa face this way mm. towards the light. That's why I've turned my surface like this. And I know that can be frustrating when you're painting along. Um, and what I would say is turn your surface on that diagonal too. Yeah. And also, if you're having trouble orienting, definitely download the mini book. And uh, where I need to blend in here, I can come back with the blue pretty easily, see? These are very light cloud forms. Mm -hmm. They're here, but they're not particularly strong. I'm just pushing that out. I want irregular edges. That looks pretty good. Some of these are easy enough to get. The shapes that I want and some are very hard and it just depends on how my brush is angled and how I'm doing with that. Mm -hmm. My handle is fairly. It's not, you know, level to the canvas, but it's angled back a bit. So I'm engaging at least the mid brush to the toe. That helps me create this sort of soft cloud shape. If I've got to turn the canvas to get a handle on it, I can do that. Making sure that maybe the more delicate part of the cloud form is facing towards that light. Mm -hmm. You can always get more pink in there. Really play with this. This is the fun of this particular piece. Kind of really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of the rain conveyance with the clouds here as well. Yeah. It's very, this is a very chill sky. It is chill. This is a chill morning. I just had my cup of coffee and I'm taking a walk on the beach. If you have that life, <laughs> if you have that beach life, if not, we're just mentally, we're getting it for ourselves right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe even if we don't have it per se, because we're creating it. Yeah. A little pink there. Fun to do. Thinking like that. Now I can come along here and again, I'm going to turn my surface so that I can see my cloud forms easier. And I'm going to take a little of my white and my 
Naples yellow light, uh, tight knit yellow. I'm going to come along some of these clouds and just kind of put in a highlight. It needs it does need to be there, but I don't want it to be too bright. Like sometimes I do these very bright highlights. I do want it to be present, but not so much so that I that the cloud day doesn't feel soft. That's why you see me mixing back into that like area there where there was some blue and some white. Mm -hmm. uh, it's real fun to do. I keep saying that, but it is really fun. It is. I like watching it. I like the. I like how the. You once. Okay, so handful of no, anecdotal things that I will say here. A lot of folks have made in comments they the two areas they struggle are flowers on bushes and clouds and skies. Flowers Meaning, on bushes, clouds and sky. I should do a whole series of paintings. Flowers and bushes, clouds and sky. Face your challenges. Well, but specifically, like once even once you get down the flower or the cloud, it's uh, as an artist. I always tend to put one too many. It is hard to find the stopping point or the starting point. So, you know, what I what I always found is the best advice, like between the folks in there, was stop when you think you should add one more and sleep on it. Oh, I like that. Stop and sleep on it. Because it's, the pain is going to be waiting for you. It is. It's going to be here. So. And it's okay to paint something, uh, look at it for a bit, and then come back to it, revisit it, and repaint it too. I think that's something that we forget is that we can iterate. Mm -hmm. Trying to make sure we've got this just really fun. And it is. It is cloudy. The sky does have that feeling to it. But it's soft. It is so soft. And this is a weird one because, like, when it's shiny in the paint, it's even kind of hard to see. So if you're getting a lot of glare on your canvas, be sure that you're pulling it out and looking at it where there isn't glare. Mm-hmm. So you can really ascertain how how it's going. I'm going to add a little more white here. Kind of focally down here as if this part has, you know, Got more light, more attention. Not all the way up necessarily. I'm using the toe of my brush. The canvas is still wet, so that's certainly impactful in that there's some blending on the surface that happens. And see that creates a little mm -hmm. contrast. Now I'm going to look at my surface like this, make sure I'm happy, and I'm pretty happy. I love there it. There we go. This is a sky we have not done before. Now it will be tempting to have row, whoa, row, 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 row. That's what you're fighting against. You're trying to create sort of an, a sense of it. You can always go back and blend in more blue, brush out more. So you can you can play with it, right? You can you can tweak it. You can play with it. You can work on it you are not at any point stuck with any part of it. So, you know, if you're getting frustrated, put your brushes down, walk away, and come back a little later and try again. So now that we have that interesting sky and we're going to start blocking in some of the major objects in our landscape, I'm going to take a half-inch angle brush. That's a brush that's Put in an angle. This one happens to be a sure handle, but it's just you want a half inch brush made for acrylic paint at an angle. 
I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my phthalo green together because they make a very nice cold morning kind of sea color. And I like this brush because it lets me do a fairly straight line for my... Oh yeah, I love this sky. It was very, very simple, but easy. A little more green into it. I'm just Beautiful. pulling it back. It was, yeah, just a lot of fun. Just something different. You know, sometimes you got to do something different. Just pulling this along here, the shoreline that's got that going on, right? So, yay, that. You want to make sure you've got a good angle. A couple subtle things I'll do is I'll make sure that my distant... My distant shoreline is maybe a little more uh, into the ultramarine blue, a little deeper. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we can let it get into some other colors there towards that center. I'm going to rinse out. And while that is having a thought in a dry, I'm going to come over and work on my cliffs a little bit. Okay. So one of the things that's going on in my cliffs is there's a bit of this greenery, but it's very dark greenery at the top of the hill. So I'm going to take my phthalo green and burnt sienna, still on my half-inch angle brush, and I'm going to make sure that I've got just a kiss of that. It kind of even comes down here. Oh, yeah. I use the corner of my brush when I want to have some control over it. If you need more burnt sienna, you get more burnt in there. Get more burnt if you must be burnt. Mm. Yeah, and then I like to uh, make sure that there's a little of this here as well. Kind of coming in, it's just sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. That out. Now we've got these cliff face that we're going to kind of talk about. And we'll start talking about it in its darker form, which will be a little bit of our Naples yellow light and burnt sienna and a little Mars black. That's going to be the combo that we get for these sort of rustic sandy cliffs initially. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to also be doing ultramarine blue and burnt sienna as well. We're going to be playing those two colors against each other. I may go ahead and add a little more black into this just because I want a deep value. Mm -hmm. You're so sweet. You're like listening to me. Mm -hmm. No, I'm watching. You're just like. No, I just love it because like I'll hear you like you're listening and I'm like, oh, you're always here listening. Well, I'm never like just stuck here alone. <laughs> when we were first doing this channel, I had to film and then John would come in and edit. So I did a lot of every all the work alone in the room. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to myself and there was no reassuring mm -hmm, to help me get through. <laughs> <laughs> I had to imagine my. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that there's just a starting point, right? We're just yeah. starting. We're thinking about it. I might go ahead and make some of this first cliff just a little bit darker just so that we have that beginning value. I'm going to get a little of the yellow into that mix. And if I need to, some white. And we're creating that distant kind of dry sand like right here. Really interesting kind of little run of sand, and I may want it even lighter, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. I don't know why I would be dishonest as your art teacher, but <laughs> but I, I do believe looking at it, I would want that as, as very light. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much experience you've had walking on a beach like this, John. How much? Well... So most of my experience was walking around um, a beach 
But see, it would be sort of. I'm using ultramarine blue. Oh, not Mars Black. I just got distracted, guys. <laughs> ultramarine blue burnt sienna. So the ocean would be the color of the hills. Yeah. The, the Galveston, and it's just brown. I'm so make a very dark color. And you'd have to, like, sprinkle big black dots along the beach for all the tar that washes up. This is true. So I'm going to turn this kind of to the side. And I want a very dark color. It is my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. Probably the closest I've come is when you brought me to San Diego. Yeah, I remember when you got out of the plane and you were like, it's like air conditioning is on outside. It really was. We went from Houston in <laughs> July to San Diego in July. I'm going to tell you, there's a 30-degree split there. <laughs> now, guys, if you've never seen my channel before, you're like, this lady is painting so messy. Yeah, it's because sometimes things are just about getting a certain color down or a certain value down. And I can do that uh, in short order very quickly. And I know that I'm like, oh, I need a dark stripe value here, so dark. Light stripe value here, so light. And then, you know, it's when you come back and you add the highlights and the values. So wait through at least the next step before you, like, decide, because it's really amazing. And actually kind of enjoyable to see, you know, something like this become landscape. Mm -hmm. I do want to come under the cliffs. And this I'll just go ahead and use the black and blue. Coming along these cliffs off into the distance edge of that so we've got that nice little run and we're going to call that a step because really everything after that is just adding those values and kind of pulling that in and it comes together in a really fun way so let's call this here if you can get this here you've got your cliffs painted in your beach painted in and your water painted in Now we're going to start putting in refining details that will help this world really come into focus and together. And this is about finding a value and color and the way light and everything reflects on other things. So one of the, I'm going to grab a little of my brown and blue again, but I am definitely going to add some white to it, which you'll see that we get this really great kind of gray color happening. And then if I, have a little bit of the navel's yellow before it goes green. Mm -hmm. I can get some very cool. Expression to it. Come in here and kind of paint up. Just initially. There's this lightness at the base of the cliff line. Mm -hmm. I can talk about. I want to come in and grab a little of my yellow and brown. Coming on the edge of my brush and kind of brushing this up. Mm -hmm. Little brush stroke. Now, you seem to have a very loosely mixed on your brush kind of. Yeah, you know, today it's just a loosely mixed day. We're just kind of finding the values in the cliffs. And we're going to use our different neutral colors to sort of discover those and try to build out the ridges and things that uh, pull this landscape together. So if I want to go down into my black and blue, I can do that. And I can try to speak about the way shadow and form are informing what this all looks like to my eye. You know, like right here where there's these little triangular indents. And again, this is a very famous location, so you have to think that uh, people are very familiar mm -hmm. with the way that it looks. So you got some, whenever you paint some place that's probably known, there is that to think about when you're painting it. Get back into my light color. You can see I just go through the different colors that I mixed from step, the previous step, mm -hmm. finding ways that we can like talk about well this cliff comes down and maybe comes back the different ridges of cliff yeah i'm 
We're just locating these. And we start to pull those shapes in, like the shape of it all starts to come into to bear. Hmm. I'm going to turn this just a little bit so that I can capture some. Mm -hmm. Shaping that in. And again, I'll go right back into my dark where I want to add a shadow. Kind of pulling those down there because it does have these little little runoffs and shadows and things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Get into my black, maybe too black there, <laughs> but it's okay. You know, you just come back and just brushing that down. I'm starting to capture some of that thought, them thoughts. Yeah. A lot more white into the brown and yellow mix, into that sandy mix. I don't want a lot of water on my brush. I want to be able to kind of find a little moment here. I love the cliff face and how it just comes to be in the little light. It just, it happens, right? As it goes, it starts to happen. And we're just trying to say, oh, there's a little cliff face and it's lit up. I use the toe of the brush. I like when I'm using, using When I'm using this half inch angle, I use it as a point or detail brush. Yeah, you've really used the angle brush here a lot. I like its versatility. It has a lot of versatility. It does. It's a, it's a brush I grew up with. <laughs> just I don't know how to explain it, but you know it was the one you were left with, and you used it. <laughs> I'll say I had access to a lot of angle brush, not necessarily permission. It was the one that wasn't being used the most. It wasn't guarded at the moment when I found it. <laughs> I like to add little highlights to that, and I'm just trying to create that sense of that there's darks and there's lights and. You know, they're present here, and I'll come back up and kind of even speak to what's going on in the greenery up top. Mm -hmm. Just making sure that we kind of see that, and that's pretty yeah. terrific. It's a wonderful rock face. We got a great rock face. The only other thing that we can do that's sort of an interesting element that we can do is we can grab a little of our Naples yellow and our quinacridone pink and make a pretty distinctive little peach. And a couple of the places where we have highlights. We can add a little peach to it to imply that maybe the color of the sky mm -hmm. is uh, warming on the cliff. See how that does? Picks it up. Mm -hmm. I like to touch that around so that this is there. Oh, yeah. The elements That's that are there. I like color. Them together. They're little extra colors. Awesome. Just makes it sort of a joy. Let's call this a step and we'll come in and we'll do some shoreline. So we're going to come in and do the beach and we're going to do a couple cool things. We're going to make the sand seem deep and deep and wet. Right, so when sand gets wet, it gets very dark and it's very reflective, but it can be kind of hard in our minds to imagine how we would paint that. So back into the, I'm going to go even into a little brown and black, and I'm going to alternate between the brown and black and the blue and black initially. 
and that's just to help me get some of the different values we may see. I'm going to come up to where I know I am having my ridge of lighter sand, but I will paint it in later. Right now, I want to kind of start to work in how we get the reflections. I'm still a half inch angle brush and I'm brushing back and forth and I'm making this much darker. And then I'm going to get into my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. I'm kind of getting that second coat on here and you can see that just deepens it, right? Almost as if water ran up the sand. There is a lot of reflection that I will be speaking to. But right now, I have to get this base color in. And what's wonderful, since I have foam coming up in the water, the water will go in fairly quickly. Okay, so now we have the beach very dark. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna together. And we'll get white involved. <laughs> like we're pulling it in to break up a fight. We'll load up a nice little amount of it on here. And the trick is going to be, and I may even try to use my T-square to help me. Because I want these to be straight. And if I can get one kind of going straight, mm -hmm. I can get all of them going straight. So even that faint line to guide me. Helps. A little more white into it. Definitely let the blue be in there. You want the blue to be visible. Mm -hmm. and just brush this to the side. See how the beach is already appearing wet? Mm -hmm. Pretty exciting stuff in my mind. What helps is if the base is um, a little bit damp so that there's some wet into wet blending. And I can go up into here if I need to so that this reflection looks as good as it can. Coming out along the beach. You can do a light, a very light kind of almost dry brushing back here, kind of implying it, but some of these you want to definitely have more focal. Oh man. I like how the, the reflection forms on the beach, the way that you make the sort of those e those horizontal lines. They're, yeah, they're horizontal. I'm brushing from left to right. I'm using the angle brush to help me in this. I will dry brush here to kind of let that be a more diffused reflection, mm -hmm. right? At this point, the surface has started to dry. And when it starts to dry, I can do some other very interesting things. I can take a little of my ultramarine blue and thalo blue mixed together, right, that we kind of had in the sky. I'm going to wipe out extra pigment and get a little white into it. Quite bright. And come here and make some very bright reflections that will be coming along here. I'm going to brush this here and then to the right. You see, I come along what is the dry sand mm -hmm. and bring that in. And just a little hint of that there. It's not a lot, but it's very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. The peach color that we have been enjoying so much. Very important at this stage. I'm going to come along with the toe of my brush. I'm 
I'm brushing from right to left. It's still horizontal, even though I've turned my surface, I'm still trying to make sure that this is a horizontal. Just a little bit of that sky mm -hmm. needs to be, it needs to be there. You brush it back into the water if you need to, because you're going to have foam and stuff coming in. And you're not going to, you're not going to be wrong. Yeah. See how that goes? Distant. It's very pink. We still got the dark there. Yeah. Not bad, right? Not at all. Not at all. Now, let's take our number four round. And we're going to take our brown, our navel's yellow, a little bit of our black, making that super light sand color. We're still going off in the distance. I'm going to have to come back and paint some dark because I overpainted my little sand color. I want this to be a little bit streaky, but it's okay because I've got to come back with my black and that's going to be a little bit streaky. Mm -hmm. Paint anything out that I shouldn't, I can always put it back super easy. Got that there, that's a little more defined. Oh, yeah. Dark, but just with a little bit of definition. Mm -hmm. And then the really gorgeous makes it look seem so fun and wonderful we're going to take our white it can have a little of the ultramarine blue into it but it's mostly our white nothing it And we're going to talk about the sea foam. Mm -hmm. So the wave that has just exited, we're actually speaking to something that happened, you know, uh, a minute ago. The sort of memory of the wave on the beach. Oh, I like that. The memory of the wave. This is the memory. What's left? The little bits of bubbles. Mm-hmm. And this lets us know that there are waves coming that far up. Mm -hmm. right? There's also this really terrific one. It's even more defined. And it, it's got, you know, a quite a, what do you call these, like the toe of the wave, the head of the wave? Sure. You know, the, the front of the wave that is a little more defined and cohesive. This is a little more of a memory. This is you know, closer to the moment that it happened. I'm just tapping this along. I, I love doing sea foam. So we've done some sea foam that was like a little more still uh, engaged in the water. We're looking through it. We're seeing it. Now we're doing it where it's it's left behind. Mm, so nice. Yeah, and when we get the water in, then it's going to be like, what? And I'm going to be like, I know, it's so fun.
And you want to make sure that you leave little bits of open signs of that foam. Mm -hmm. That's bigger and smaller kind of little dots and marks. Love the little dots. Little dots, little marks, little dots, little marks. They're looking really good. Little dots, little marks. When you have that kind of really thought out, mm -hmm. right, we're going to come in with our reflection colors, which we were putting out. And we can kind of hand brush the more thoughtful ones. The only thing is I don't want to lose the horizontal. So you can see I'm pushing it out with my finger because I don't want to lose that. Yeah. I may even come into here. And I'll push with my finger. I will. And then get into your dark colors. And then this is very interesting. You're going to bring. Oh, yeah. Some little bits of shadow. That sometimes is as important as the highlights to say that there's little bits of shadow. It really does. It brings the contrast to the highlights. I would say that it adds depth. It does. And it says that something has broken that light and is happening there. And then we want to just I'm just bringing that back in. I want to make just a little bit of it. It's a regular. It's just about breaking that up. That is a step. Come back and we'll finish the water. So now I want to put in the ocean, the part that's rushing up. Uh, we've got a good base. It's still going to be in the ultramarine blue thalo green mix so i'll begin with a little ultramarine blue thalo green i'm on my number four round mm -hmm. i'm gonna come to the back of my like horizon i'm gonna just make sure that this is level right and then as we go forward we'll get a little more green in it and i do want to get some white into that mix so that there's some light value I know like a, it is lighter and it's a little, sm I don't know, like smoky is almost the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit smoky. I'm going to come along here. And I'm brushing back. Carefully up into the dark blue line. just kind of bring a little green into things here and there just little dashes it's not much but it's just a little bit of a irregularity to the water and then maybe a little ultramarine blue and that's just because in the water there often are little shadows little irregularities maybe there's kelp coming in maybe there's a deeper bottom you don't really know but you want to have just a little bit of interest mm -hmm. my ultramarine blue over towards my white and we're going to begin sea foaming the sea foam. So I'm going to make a off white color with the ultramarine blue. It is, for the purposes of this painting, almost totally white. But the thing is, is that, um, you know, distance, color, reflected light would keep the sea foam from being a bright, right white, except for in a couple places. I'm on the toe of my number four round, and I'm going to just barely touch. Because I want this to have a nice distant perspective. Even up here, I'll, I'll bring that up forward, but it kind of goes into the pink, so they're kind of blended. And yeah, a little bit there. And we know that there's something happening. I love all the little sea foam. Sea foam is how this little piece kind of waves, and sea foam is how this little piece comes together.
just tapping along. And if you have to roll out and put this really on your toe, then from here, I'm going to bring back a little bit. Just tapping it in. Mm -hmm. It's okay that it's a titch wet and that there's some color picking up. You'd have that. And another thing to do is come out every once in a while with your brush as if there's a bit of a lip scene that creates that edge running forward. Mm -hmm. We want that edge to run forward. All right. Just tap in a little roughness of what is the sea foam. I do try to like let little bits of the green kind of show through. And I, I think about the ellipses that we expect to see in our sea foam, mm -hmm. even though most of it is going to be covered in this rough edge. All right. So we're thinking about that. We're being thoughtful. We're making a plan. This is where all the little unicorns come from. And these would be very tiny unicorns, Don. The tiny unicorns have to come from somewhere. <laughs> tiny unicorns. Where did you leave room for? I'm going to have to paint unicorns coming out of sea foam if he doesn't stop. The fairy unicorns come from there. But that's not going to show up on the YouTube metric. No one's searching for sea foam unicorn. No, but. That's okay. We know. I know maybe they are. Didn't know it. This is the universe saying, do this thing. I'm just trying to make sure that, kind of like in my other examples of sea foam, that there's the breaking because it's, you know, it's on the surface. And and we know this all kind of coming back here is pretty, pretty foamy. It's, it's kind of a thing. I'm going to be lighter. You can see as I come back, it's, it's lighter though. Mm -hmm. okay. It's distinctly lighter. I'm going to let that have a little bit of a dry for a moment, and I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue and my black together, and I'm going to turn this this way, and only so that I can come into the edges of my wave. Make sure I'm exaggerating that shadow just a, just a smidge. Mm-hmm. And then I can come in and get a little of my reflection color. I don't know if I want to use my number, my angle, or if I'm going to just kind of try to work it carefully with my toe here. And you can see just putting a little sky reflection isn't going to hurt me right here. Is that what happened? Wow. Keeps it keeps it looking wet and activated. Looking good. It's a wet beach. Waves have just come and gone. It's the morning. Maybe it's an afternoon. Hard to say time of day. Now you're gonna get a much brighter white. Like it doesn't have to be pure white. It could have still just some of the ultramarine blue in it, but barely. Mm -hmm. In a couple of places. You're going to add some of that brighter white. Just there on the edge. Mm. Go into the water a bit, but don't take out all the other wonderful little whites that you put out there. Because that's what makes the foam. Tap 
got this little edge here. I love this. I love the highlights on the foam. Now, a little subtle thing is I leave just a little bit of the original foam at the toe and then come back as if this is kind of thick and shaped. You you try to save the pure white for that, right? Yeah, I do. Well, and it's not even pure white. It's still just it, it still has a little bit of the uh, ultramarine in it. It's just for the purposes of this painting, it is our pure white. Mm. Oh, we did really good. This is so nice. Just a nice little painting of a nice little shore. You know, something to kind of stretch our minds and think about how this type of scene is constructed. But there's a lot to do here. A lot to play with creatively. Let's get our signing brush. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. I'm going to use my number one monogram liner. And I think I'm going to be kind of cheeky with my Sherpa signature this time. All right. You know, we'll see if this pays off or not. Could be, could be a mistake, but. So sometimes I feel like I don't want to have my signature take away from the overall composition of the painting and one way of doing that is making it part of the painting i don't know if this will work but i'm doing it anyways <laughs> do you like it mm -hmm. it's your pussy foam signature Oh, wow. Little Sherpa dots. Little Sherpa dots that just kind of mimic the sea foam. I mean, yeah, I could have signed normal. Wow. Wow. So, Sarah. Mm hmm. I did it. Very much. I signed it. There you go. A little bit of a wet sand beach on a calm day. Misty kind of moody day. That was good. I really liked that one. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate when you guys give me your time. I hope you love your paintings and your outcomes. Don't forget to use all the free resources. They can really, really help your results. Um, if, you're, if you need them, mm -hmm. please take advantage of them. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other, and I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.